fish four X's under the gun. I'm kind of like caught. I'm going to play kind of cautiously this pot with Ace Jack, but I still definitely want to play a pot with a reasonably strong hand in position, so I'm just not going to fold even though he four X'd. 10 8, same thing. Relentless aggression. I sewing the fish who just will never four bet you. Like, if you don't have to risk to get four, uh, of getting four bet, you should just three bet everything you want to play. I mean, you get, you know, a bigger pot in position that. You have the initiative on, you pot control when you want to, get value when you want to, more information about his hand, be able to bluff, whatever. Really, really, really good spot for for you. Uh, when I get overcalled by this guy in the big blind, I'm kind of skeptical that I have enough equity to bet. Like I, I think that he's not going to let me get, get away with it. So I could be wrong, but I don't really know, and I don't really mind checking back. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay just checking, trying to improve, and then when I don't, uh, giving up. Check to me, I probably would have gone for a bet because could win on a heart river, could win right here, and could improve, of course. Uh, I raise ace queen, fishy guy, re raises half a stack. I'm just gonna ship it and feel pretty good about it. Even though I'm under the gun, he's big blind. I don't, when it's a fish, it just doesn't matter that much because they don't know what's going on. They don't understand the significance of position as much. and They're kind of just like looking at their two cards and playing a fixed strategy with two cards from any position. To some degree, not purely, but some degree, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, you just gotta ship it. We both have the same hand, so whatever. Here is Ace Queen. Um, probably never see betting pure air. Like maybe the worst handle see bet is uh, the Ace of Clubs, the four and three people, um, but with just no pair, no draw over card. Yeah, I'm just okay letting this one go. Okay, so here's a really interesting spot with Queen Ten. Raise a small blind, C bit queen five two rainbow, get called, turns a five. Uh, I think this is like this is a board where no one really has anything most of the time. And when I have a queen and then another five comes, he almost definitely has nothing. I would imagine he has a bunch of gutters, some ace highs, and some just like pure floats that maybe just had backdoor flush draw or just nothing. Um, so anyway, so my range is really strong or my, I'm sorry, my range. My hand is really strong. And his range is extremely, like, it's just, like, mostly nothing that would probably just fall to a turn bet. So I think the play is to chuck call this turn. I think it's actually pretty pretty clear. Because I don't think he's quite on the level that, like, well, neither of us have anything. And I, like, especially when he call calls, uh, pre-popping in this spot, he mostly has nothing. So I think it's a pretty good spot to double barrel with just, like, air cards. Um, but I don't think he's on the level where he's like, oh, well, I have to call every pair and, like, most of me is highs and whatever. So I think that uh, check call turn and then check raise river. I think the the reason I want to check raise this river is because if he has nothing, he's just not going to call. And if he has a 5, he'll probably value that anyway. And if he has a buff, he has a chance to buff or bet small to try to make me fold or do whatever. So I'm, And I'm not too worried about like him having 6s and then, like, well, he might call a bet with 6s and then not bet himself. Or I just don't think he's going to call that much. Or bet that much, or yeah, you know, there's not much money is going in when he has a middling showdown value hand, no matter what. Uh, oh, the bottom right table with three six. Uh, I would normally fold, but since that guy's a fish, I'm getting a sick price, and I'm going to be in position versus the fish. Let's see the flop. Here with Ace Jack, I think I end up three uh, top top left. I think I end up three betting this because. The fish had now been raising and he'd been losing too, so he's probably more likely to just get in there and gamble it up. So at this point, I'm just like, uh, I'm kind of just accepting my fate with Ace Jack, and I think the way to play it is to re raise and try to isolate the fish, get it to appear with the fish, have him call. I think that'd be pretty reasonable with the way this guy's been playing. Um, especially when he's losing, I think, you know, he's kind of splashing. And then, yeah, he folds. I mean, it was deceptive how it's, that's why it's like HUDs are very deceptive. Uh, and. Um, and how much information they actually provide because that guy was losing and he's playing a very specific style at this moment, way different than he was, or way different than the HUD would let you, lead you on to believe. Oh, I should, I should talk about it as well. My HUD is uh, named obviously up top and then VPIP, pre thought raise, 3 bet, and fold a 3 bet, but I, I don't play these games that much, so uh, it's mostly, you know, I take it all with a grain of salt. I don't have that much information. Two eight suited. I might go forth of big ones with full stack and playing really badly, but 
when he has he's the most likely I think to continue and he has like uh, no money in a stack that then I kind of need implied odds I want or I want hands that are gonna make top pair which do say suited will just not do so versus him or versus that stack size not that player that stack size I think you gotta just just play more conservatively. Yeah, this is this is kind of what I was talking about. This party so sick, is that you can. Um, they're just tables with open seats with, like fish, bad regs, whatever. Here with King Eight uh, again. This guy's just losing, so he's playing like really loose. He's kind of all over the place. I was just gonna check call and put it in no matter what, pretty much no matter what came, uh, and just to hope that he decided this is the time to take a stand. Then when he checks back. Uh, I think that he has nothing that he's not going to bluff with. If he had nothing, he would have bet the flop or bluffed then with it. So if he's gotten to this juncture, he has showdown value, especially on a brick turn. He has showdown value or nothing that's not going to bluff. So his showdown value is probably pretty bad, so he's not going to bet it. So I just have to take over and start trying to get some value. I get one street, which is fine. I mean, he probably had something like really bad, like maybe, you know, 10 I, 10 5, who knows? A deuce. I don't know. Here are threes versus the fish on this board. Uh, fish normally let you check down. They normally don't attack checkbacks, so um, I'm just going to show this, try and show this down. And he bets, I'll just give up. King, queen. I think. Yeah, I remember this hand. I, I tanked this. I, I think this is probably a pretty clear fold, but. Uh, it just felt like gambling, because why not? I think pr you probably have 35% equity versus his range. And yeah, you're just, I think you're just not, yeah, you're just not quite getting that price. But, okay, and I versus that hand, it's clearly a fold, but yeah, gamble, gamble. Here with King Eight, I could go either way based on the big blind. But when it's a fish and he's short, and King Eight's a top, like get pretty solid, top and strong middle pair type flopping hand, I'm definitely happy to raise blind versus blind. Here with a fish limps and I have aces. Uh, in the small blind, I'm normally really tight about raising the situation, and I hem and haw between making it five and six big blinds, but I decided to be greedy and go for six because I thought that it would lead me for the best opportunity for a bet bet shove. Like, I, I have the best chance to get all the money in when you're putting bets in on earlier streets because then they became, you bet like, uh, it, the, the kind of two big blinds becomes exponentially bigger if you're betting the same amount, the same percentage of pot on each street, so. I'm just on this flop unless it force traded or some or something. I was I was just gonna get it in, and I mean I couldn't have at really asked for a better turn river. So yeah, yeah. Uh, if he had a better hand, I mean good for him. But when he's a fish and he's limping and he's just a fish, I mean I, I can't imagine not getting it in with king queen or better here. Especially if you decided to raise it. I mean I could definitely see him having a better hand some percentage of the time, but. I think most of the time he just uh, doesn't have it and you're missing out on value by checking. You'll notice I didn't 3-bet 7-4. Uh, I, I mean, what I've kind of noticed is that people won't 3... or they just don't fall into 3-bet when you 3-bet in position all that much anymore, even at lower stakes. I 3-bet a couple times before the video started and didn't work. And the guys had no history with me. So I think their default is to, people's default nowadays is to just not fold versus in position 3-bets. So I'm just, I just don't, don't bluff that much. And I think that's the way to go. Here with 9s versus the fish, uh, yeah, um, especially with the stack size, I'm fine, just get it in. And also pretty content to so let have him call and then I get to play the pot in position.
uh, the 6-4, the top left hand where I fought. I mean, it's just something to say. I raised pre-fought because the fish aren't really shutting me down from raising, and I fought trips, and I mean, the only play is to bet. You should just never ever be checking there versus fish. Unless you have a sick read, but as a default with limited information, it's like easiest bet in the world. Uh, this is the most gin flop you could imagine with nines. I, I guess I guess probably the best flop is uh, Broadway Broadway nine or something or Broadway nine or whatever. But uh, somehow when nine when nine becomes an overpair and three bit pot, you're pretty damn happy. So yeah, we got this new table. Um, I would assume this guy with this tiger avatar is just a fish. People that min raise, I actually end up getting fooled a little later in the video. But people that min raise positions that aren't the button typically end up being fish. That's a that's definitely a good way to kind of make some some guesses. People that don't have full stacks probably fish. People that have fishy names that aren't trying to be clever with a fishy name, just a straight fishy name, probably fish. Uh, people that, like I said, min-raise or limp from, or limp or min-raise from not the button, probably fish. People that 4x the button, probably fish. I think that, I don't think that happened on video, I think that was a little bit before, but, I mean, another solid indicator. And that's kind of a bummer for our fish, so hopefully he reloads. Uh, here with King Jack, against a fishy guy, I think definitely bet the flop he could at this point I mean he can kind of have anything and then the turn I think that you just I think I mean you just have enough equity to bet here I think is, is like the, the short of it is that yeah I mean he's clearly never folding an ace but versus a fish I think I would just shove the river if I got if I got he insta leads this round. I mean, I'm just, I'm pretty much, when I don't improve, I'm just done with every river when he double calls. But I think I could just shove the flush on the river, and I don't think the fish would ever fold an ace. So that's another solid reason to be betting the turn. And, uh, I think that he could, he could have his own floats that he would fold that might take me off of it. He could have a pocket pair, a lower pocket pair, he just decides to fold. Um, and then, of course, if he does have a nine or something, I also have my king and jack. So. Yeah, but I mean, clearly he had an ace when he check call, check call, like leads like that. Or maybe tens, but yeah. I don't think we were good, and I don't think putting any more money into the pot would have resulted in us winning that in any way, shape, or form, so. Just gotta let him have it. I think my general, my generally when people get aggressive and I don't really know, like, what the hell they could be up to, and it's. Even when it's like not really reasonable for them to be betting a spot or them to have a hand in the spot, I think in the spots where it's not like it makes no sense for them to have a hand or for them to lead a hand, they're more likely to have it because they just they just happen to have one of their hand one of the good hands in that range on that board, and they just want to lead it or check raises to try and level you and um, make you kind of spaz out. And that, I mean, and that's like a good indicator. I think like a lot of the time that's they're not. It's not a spot. They don't recognize, okay, we both have nothing in the spot. Let me fight for it by leading. I think it's mostly just them trying to trap you. And in the spots where they wrap something, I would say it's more of a mixed bag. But if I don't know, like, especially if I have no equity and I, I don't really know what's going on with their bluffs, especially at low stakes when people are all over the place, uh, I'm pretty conservative. and Just, yeah, okay, you take it down. Especially, I mean... If I if I kind of see what they're doing, maybe I'll be greedy. But if I if I have no idea like what the hell's going on, like how how they view poker or the spot or what their range could be or what you know, I just have very limited information. I'm definitely just letting it go because I mean that's that's how oftentimes I see people make mistakes is they make very bold assumptions and they turn out to not be correct. <laughs> um, here, king queen. I would continue with a backdoor flush draw, but. I don't mind just check folding this flop. Pre flop, I can kind of go either way. But in the small line, I would definitely raise. In the big line, I could flip a coin. 
and I think versus two and a half error min rays, I think I would prefer to uh, call. Here with threes, see that flop, I'm definitely out of his range, so I'm peeling off. Turn, check, check. River, he bets, and I, th I mean, he doesn't really rep anything, but I'm kind of making a bold guess because most of the time I call that spot, I'm wrong. So uh, I'm just going to hope that that hero fold was a good play. Threes, I mean, set mining. If it was just one razor, I'd probably three better fold. But two players in the pot, I don't mind set mining. Tens, small line versus button raise, standard, get it in. And yeah, I mean, also something like this could happen, which is great. Six, eight off. Uh, I think I like I like C betting there, just because I, I wouldn't like C betting there versus a reg who defends probably like uh, a lot of broadways, but the when a fish defends he's, he's got a sick wide range and he could definitely just have nothing there a ton, and I could see a, a bet probably being profitable versus a fish that has a decent amount of nothing and won't fight for enough pots and probably won't raise almost ever so I get turns, free turns and a free turn in river. Probably a lot of showdowns. Yeah, six nine. I would have raised if the small blind fish had more money, but when he's that short, I don't really want to get shoved on, because that takes away a ton of equity from my hand when I don't get to see the flop. So I don't mind just giving that up. Uh, here is five three. This is the spot that I was talking about earlier. I think. I think that he's probably just trying to level me here, and I would say this because, well, first from experience, second, I would guess that most of the time he leads here or when he did lead here with air, he got raised. And he's aware of this because he's played enough, and this is just like a metagame thing, but he's aware of this because he's led like a FOS spot and got people to spaz off to him. So I think he's probably just got jacks or ace-10 or whatever it is, and um, he's just prepared to put it in and hope for the best. And I don't, I mean, I kind of have equity back to a straight and flush, but it's six max and those hands on a paired board aren't really worth all that much. Here with King Queen, just ISO three bidding the fish to play a pot of position. I mean we've said this I've said this a million times and it's just such a good play that uh I'm just gonna keep doing it. And like there's no such thing as like the fish catching on and adjusting. Def it's some of the high six fish do, but uh the low six fish just almost never do. And this flop is, I mean, I got mixed feelings about this flop because I'm only really getting one street unless I improve or something works out for me, but uh, at the same time, I just crush his range, so yeah, oh god, I gotta talk about this top left. So, top left, I'm pretty sure this guy's a fit. I raised another going Queen Nancy, he had called in two spots, this is a board where people mostly have nothing, it's just really hard to have anything on this board. and. They don't really have like the overpair combos that I would have in my range theoretically, so I think betting pops really solid. And then when this guy who you know, I'm gonna start the video real quick, just like it's okay, he's a reg. I I definitely think it's reasonable that he has uh, a lower pocket pair in his range. And I, I I the other thing I've noticed is that like the the weaker players, which I mean he's a reg, but I don't know that much about him, and he's playing one too, so it's a good chance that they give just too much credit to the ace. So I think I can just bet all of my bluffs there and probably show a profit. And then he likes, he, he ended up snap calling and he called a card that I thought he might fold a lot. So I thought it was also reasonable that he check called the pot with ace high or a better hand or maybe he just wasn't folding. Uh, and the flush got there and I think him having the flush is somewhat reasonable, especially for him to snap call the turn. So uh, I just decide to give up on that river and he has a flush so it worked out. Here at the king queen he bet, I was just going to call call. Uh, would he bet and then checked, which I was, like, might be the most scary line to be honest. Uh, but I still think you gotta bet this river because uh, I think a like, fish gonna fish and he might just um, just be like, there just might be too much value in a bet. Even though you're gonna get value cuts sometimes, I still think you gotta bet because fish are just so bad. <laughs> Also, I do, and I do kind of block ace, 
ace combos with king queen kind of because you know his ace king and ace queen combos are kind of killed so unless he has a bunch of offsuit aces in his range he's not going to have all that many all that many aces here with 10-3 when a player the fish checks his board I mean he's just never tried calling air I don't think and I had been messing with that guy a ton so uh, I was, wasn't going to barrel and improved, but I definitely think with the 10 and back to a straight and flush draw, I think that you gotta go for it on that flop. I think that, I think that, uh, your reasonable shot to take it down, and even if you don't, you could definitely improve or win somehow by the river, so, yeah, but when, even when I improved a gutter, that's just not like, uh, I, he's just, like, I can't imagine all the many hands that are check, call, check, folding. I, I I mean I guess in theory he could he's check calling all of his ace highs or a ton of ace highs but I, I just don't know that and that's a bold assumption to then put the rest of the stack in especially versus a fish in my call anyway so <clears throat> yeah I don't mind giving up eight and I get through it by fishy tiger avatar uh, I mean you to get in versus short stacker I'm not sure probably be a fold you have to I'm sure there's a way to solve it or something but um pretty close but versus fish fist pump. A6 off, and probably most king king x offs, and, and better queen x offs on the button bottom left are be good spots to raise because you can make top pair, and that's kind of like what I would expect to happen quite often is the fish to defend, and you to be in these single raise pots in position where you want to make top pair, and sure enough, the fish defends, and I think the jack ten fives. Really, I mean, you shouldn't see, but he just courted to that board. You have really crappy equity. You could show down. And Fish will let you show down, so try and show down. And then when he min bet, min bets, I'm just like, eh, call, call. Definitely call turn, and then river. Eh, might as well call anyway. Uh, nine dues for this Fish. Again, Fish let you show down, so uh, I lean towards not turning my hand into a bluff, especially when I don't have a backdoor flush draw. And so I check the flop. Turn. I'm not gonna turn this into a bluff, especially uh, especially on that turn. And then river. I'm really not that happy about, but he checks and I check, and he probably should have just bet that river with six high, no showdown value. So yeah, that's why you uh, that's why you check back. You you go to showdown with a lot of the hands that you might just turn into bluffs on flop or a kind of bluff kind of value. That's because fish just let you do it. Here with the threes, it's fish. I just said pot pot and then pot or shove the river. And I actually misread this river. I thought I thought either the flop or the turn, I, th I think I thought the, the nine on the flop was an eight, so I, it was just a four flush, so I was just giving up. But he ends up checking, which really works out for me because I would have checked well to the full house to a fish on this river. And I thought that I had just had a set on a four flush, and he ends up having ace king. So I think mean, he wasn't calling anyway, but probably. But um, in in practice, I shove that river. I think it's like a balance. Like I, if you, he's not folding a, a club, I don't think to a shove, but he might also call three fourths with one pair. So I don't know. You just use your best judgment. Here with the king nine, I wasn't even really paying attention. I was thinking about something else, and I get in this weird river spot, and. I, I mean, most of the time I would just call here, but he overbets. If you bet less than overbet, I would always call. And I would still most all, normally must always call, because, like, what the hell could he have? But especially versus fish that aren't, like, insane or have, like, shown a penchant to overbet with bluffs. Uh, same thing. I just I just find that, that that happens to be mostly value bet. So I just kind of, uh, I, I, a hero fold, make a, that's actually a pretty sick hero fold. And just pray to God that I'm right. Here with queen five versus the same fish, uh, I decide again that I don't really want to bet this and be faced with him check calling because I'm not sure when I should be showdowning and I could get check raised and eh. and he and he played pretty badly when I checked back so I would assume that he would continue playing badly. 
Turns the ace again. I'm, just, I'm not going to turn my hand into a bluff or try to value bet a card that theoretically improves my range. And then on the river, I'm just like uh, thinking, well, maybe you learned your lesson and decided to bluff this river. And he had, but unfortunately, the way the hands played out, it didn't work out in his favor. So I call down. I mean, I, I, I kind of like his play, kind of, because I'm definitely checking back king high. But uh, queen... I'm probably not going to fold a pair. I could have improved with the four, but probably not. Um, and he has uh, he has shot sure down value. I, I guess really not though. I, I guess I would just always bet a lot of my air on the flop there. So maybe it was a silly bluff, but I mean he's kind of he, he gets the idea. I, I guess or, or maybe he's clicking buttons, but yeah. When I when I check and then check the ace, I probably have some sort of bad showdown value. But on that the, the problem is on that board, like I, I bet I bet ton of my air so I'm not I don't really have all that much air that's then checking. Ch checking. So it's like it's likely that I well, I bet the ace I have it and if I check I have some worse pair. So on that river you could if you value it sixes plus I think it'd probably be a pretty solid play. Uh here are these gonna get re raised. I think Pot four betting is pretty reasonable, but you write a lot of variance by doing that, and I think that I just don't really mind taking the pot in position. And when he checks the sport insta, I think he has ace king squarely. I think that anything worse likely would bet. I can't. I just can't imagine him re-raise checking air on the board. And yeah, I mean it's not as cool because I'm doing the audio afterwards, but I wish I could have said I think he has ace king. Maybe I should have typed it in chat and whatever. I thought he had ace king. I promise. <clears throat> here again versus the fish or I think this guy's a fish and then I think I realize that he's not but yeah when, again because he min raises the cutoff I think that's normally a fish's move so I try to 3 bet to isolate play 3 bet pot uh, get the initiative having the initiative versus fish or just in general is really important but versus fish especially uh, and then he folds so yeah whatever here with nines I'm just gonna uh I'm gonna squeeze versus this guy again. Rune is gonna cut off. He seems to kind of be in there fighting for a couple more pots, and I don't. I mean, I'm just not gonna overcall, especially when like the fish is the preflop raiser. But even when the fish is in the pot, like I don't want someone else to have the initiative. I want the initiative. I should have bet this flop with the ace five when checked. I wasn't paying attention. I was just thinking about these nines and how sweet it is to pop a set versus fish in through that pot. Uh, so yeah, uh, bet until I get it in. There is no check. Yeah, I mean, definitely bet bigger on lean towards betting bigger on a board that you know all the diamonds kind of kill your action except for that one, which is really really sweet. And yeah, no other play other than to shove. And I end up running sick hot. He has like uh, mid jack of diamonds. He's like ace jack of diamonds. So I mean, like. Yeah, whatever. He's, if he has a as a diamond, he's just gonna pay me off. It doesn't like he's so sick of me. I think at this point that even if he had you know these of diamonds, it was going in there. So that's that. Here with Ace King again, I could really go either way, but with the two fish, I don't want to. I don't want to discourage them from playing. So I'm gonna call and try to get them into the pot. Unfortunately, they both insta fold. So yeah, I mean it's not really that big of a deal to you know take a single raise pot against against a, you know, reg, some of the gun, or I guess I don't know who's probably a reg, some of the gun open. Uh, so let me talk about my bet sizing in this hand, because I think it's pretty interesting. So the flop, he's checking, which is kind of unusual. He is likely not check raising this board all that often. At higher stakes, it's reasonable for somebody to be, like, tricky and go for a check raise here. But I don't think middle stakes and lower, they're check raising this flop almost ever. So he's either got nothing and he's decided to give up, or he's got some showdown value that's just going to check all at least one. So I think versus that range, pretty good off, or best off betting half pot and just getting a really good price on your buffs. Excuse me. Getting a really good price on your buffs when you have them, uh, which you probably have a decent amount of. Then the turn I pot it. And the reason is, when he check calls, he's saying that he's a bluff catcher, or just some hand worse than ace-king, and I could have just pure air or uh, a number of draws 
that are on this board. So uh, I want to be big here to get value because I think it's unlikely that he falls this turn very often. And I would just bet big here with whatever two cards I bet. And the river, he doesn't almost ever improve. It's just oh, it's like impossible for him to improve unless he has squarely fives. Can't imagine a backdoor flush in his range, especially when I have the ace of hearts. And there's the king of hearts on board. So since he still has a bluff catcher and I either have uh, like just like the nuts that, you know, whatever, whatever nuts that got there was there, whatever. Or I just have nothing, you know, queen jack, ace, whatever, uh, missed clubs. Um, I think I get a bit greedy and go for a shove and just hope that he just thinks that I would just bluff here way too much and just puts it in. So, yeah, I mean, I don't mind three-fourths pot either, but I try to be super cool and own somebody on video, but it doesn't work, so I'm just average. <clears throat> Queen Jack, I could definitely see raising this fob, but, I mean, calling standard, for sure. The only reason I would raise it is because it's a fish and he's betting small and I want to try to get, like, you know, a bit more value, but I don't have great information that he would play back a ton versus raises. Uh, here with the Jack-9, uh, we got the Tiger guy and the big blind. Um, I have like an okay-ish hands with 100 big blinds. Under the gun raises when he's a bad rig, I don't mind taking the flop. And here with the Queen Jack, I'm just calling three streets no matter what happens, basically. It's a crappy run out, but you still really can't fold top pair. It's too good. It's just too good, but that high, not good enough. Uh, here with the 5-4, I tried to isolate the fish, but then I got called by the small blind. He checks, I check, turn, he checks, or, I'm um, sorry, the flop. The flop, uh, this is, I mean, you could bluff protection about whatever you want to call it on the flop, but I think you're best off checking. Turn, definitely best off checking after you check the flop. The river is just the stone worst card, because, like, if he didn't have you, he just got you, but, I mean, you can't do anything about it. The only thing you can do is check and pray to God. But, yeah. Um, he's got it. I thought he, I thought he, Probably played it okay. Maybe you should maybe you should have bet the river, assuming again that that's a board where I bet with out of my air. So if I'm checking, I have a pair that's worse than a jack. Uh, but checking's okay too. But with queen three, I, I, the only reason I bet that pop is because I have a uh, backdoor flush draw over your card and enough probably enough equity to take it down. I should talk about the seven ten. This is a guy we've been playing with. I've been playing with him a decent amount this session, and he's just been. I, like, I haven't played, like, I can't recall all that many pots that I really played with him, and he hasn't seemed like he's fighting for that many pots. S and, uh, when he, so when he, like, finally leads this board, I'm just, eh, I'm just making, like, a really tight fold, and just folding sevens when it's, like, he, when he's kind of repping trips are better. I mean, he could have had a flush draw, but, uh, I, whatever he did have, he was going to bet the turn, at least the turn, and possibly the river, and I, I'm just, I just don't want to deal with that when I have, when I'm, you know, I'm kind of like flipping or dead, and the guy's been pretty passive, I'm just fine with letting him take that one down. It's kind of what I'm talking about without, like, a, a lot of information, especially, well, I guess it's not even, I shouldn't even say I don't have a lot of information. My information is that the guy's pretty tight. So, pretty marginal spot. I just lean towards giving it, giving it to him. Here are these nine. Fish, I think he's a fish within his hand. I'm pretty sure it proves me wrong that he's not a fish. He's actually a reg who plays interestingly, uh, min raises the button. I mean, with this bet sizing, it just makes me feel like he's, uh, he's likely a f reg. Uh, but I think I'm getting probably too good of a price to fold. I could flop a straight draw, gutter over card, and I'll f back to a flush draw. A flush draw, the ace could be good. Flop full house, that would be nice. So, eh, when I'm getting three to one, I guess you gotta just take the flop and Pray. And yeah, on that board, I'm just. You got it, buddy. Not gonna continue no pair, no draw without sick information. Whenever somebody posts, I normally just label them a fish until I'm proven otherwise. So this guy posts, so. Yeah, label them a fish. And then, actually, I made a mistake with this hand. I was going to just fold versus another gun, but I should not have auto-folded. I should have waited to see if the fish called. Because if the fish called, I think there's easily enough equity in squeezing, because now you can take down even more money pre, and 
you can get like heads up with the fish or three way with the fish and play a pot with him with the initiative and like uh, a hand that's probably I mean he's hundred percent of hands preflop and then maybe he has a hand, he's got more speculative hand more often than not because he posted and then he's like eh, well I'm already in there I might as well like call I'm getting a better price than everyone else except for the big blind but he just doesn't have position so or you know maybe he feels invested whatever so uh yeah i think that i would have squeezed uh, i mean when a fish is in a pot you should just squeeze try to get heads up with them but uh, i was kind of just getting a bit ahead of myself and made a bad play so oh well here with ace five flop check i mean standard you know check, checking back ace high on the flop but i don't want to get too much into it but it's like a pretty standard play uh, turn again, you know, no reason to start bet. I mean, if you're gonna bet, you're gonna bet just bet the flop. And that turn's pretty silly. And then the river get there, value bet, probably told to a check raise because especially on that board when so many aces chop, people don't really think to check raise. Even with their chop, even trying to fold a chop, they mostly just uh, think they like like ah, you know, I, I have an ace. There's an ace out there. It's pretty unlikely you have an ace, so. I trapped you, and now I'm gonna call. Um, so yeah, I think versus different opponents, it could you know tend to not fold there, but I think I might just make some hero, maybe make some hero folds versus one two guys check raise the river. All the other thing is that like no one ever check raises the river, or yeah, mostly no one ever check raises the river. Middle stakes then to a lesser extent, lower stake or to, I'm sorry. At lower stakes, no one checkers are running to a lesser extent at middle stakes, so pretty cautious about that, that kind of stuff. Definitely sets off bells and whistles when somebody check raises me on the river and at low stakes. A6 is like an okay hand to 3 bet bluff with. But again, I'm just my frequency for doing that is so low that probably A6 might not even be a good enough hand because I'm doing it so infrequently. So, and then I think this is the last time the session. Ace two suited, definitely call. You know, all my aces A6 suited in position with fish or bad people, you know, bad regs raining in the pot. Play a pot in position. Here he he insta checks the flop, which I don't know about that. I, th I thought he was I thought he would almost definitely be strong here for doing this because this is a board where I would expect him to bet all his, a lot of his air because it's a good board to bet air because no one has much of anything and has this whole perception perception that he can you know have all of his pocket pairs and we have less we have them less often because we're uh, three betting them and you know he could he could drop them and then you know of course if he does have just two over cards he could improve so it's almost suspect that he would check the swap instead of taking a really good seabed situation but you know, again, it's one two. People make mistakes, and I, you know, I have position, and likely won't win this three way. So uh, I think the best play is just half pot, and you know, kind of see what happens. I think the fish is mostly just done with the hand unless he's got a piece of something. And then, yeah, I mean, there's a good shot that this guy's done with the hand too. So I bet, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, take it down. So yeah, that's my video. Hope you guys appreciated it. Uh, Hope you learned something, and um, good luck to you guys.